So how is it that we can change the expression of our genes? Well, I'm gonna introduce you to a very simplistic version of the epigenome. So as I mentioned, changes in gene expression, you can increase genes, they're active, or you can decrease the expression of genes, they're not active even though they're there. And these, thing, these certain factors called uh, epigenetic marks, like methylation groups, acetylation groups, they sit on top of your genes, your DNA, and they'll turn genes on and they'll turn genes off. And these epigenetic marks are regulated by micronutrients, by exercise, by stress, by sleep. And what's really interesting is that these epigenetic marks not only change the expression of your own genes, but they can also be passed on through the germline, so through the uh, eggs and the sperm cells, to your offspring, to your children, and even grandchildren we're finding out now. So to highlight, uh, I, I guess I'll give you an example, uh, starting with mice. And so this mouse here, a little fatty, uh, was fed a very high inflammatory diet. He was uh, given lots of corn oil. So um, he became obese and got type 2 diabetes. Big, big surprise, we know the role of inflammation uh, in, in type 2 diabetes. Uh, but what was a surprise is that he had an offspring, a female pup, that was given normal diet. So they weren't, this pup wasn't given a high corn oil diet. It wasn't given a high inflammatory oil diet. But the pup ended up getting type 1 diabetes. So it wasn't able to produce insulin. And that's because the high corn oil inflammatory diet in the male, the father, changed the expression, epigenetically changed the expression of genes involved in uh, the insulin production in the, their beta islet cells. And this was passed on through the sperm. And so this pup now, you know, even though it didn't do anything wrong, has type 1 diabetes. Um, so let's look at a good example. So this is a classic study that was done in U uh, Duke University where researchers took um, these mice that have like yellow fur. Um, and this yellow fur, these mice are called agouti mice. And the gene that encodes for the yellow fur is the agouti gene. And um, while their fur is really pretty, uh, the problem is, is that this yellow fur, the gene that encodes for this yellow fur, also predisposes them to obesity, to cancer, and to uh, type 2 diabetes. So having this yellow fur in mice is a bad thing because you're, gonna, uh, become, you're more likely to get obese and get cancer earlier. And what they did was they took female mice and they fed them a diet high in B vitamins. They gave them folic acid and they also gave them B12 three weeks before they got pregnant. And what they found was that these mice had silenced the agouti gene. They had methylated that agouti gene and was passed on to their offspring. So even though the offspring had that agouti gene, it wasn't expressed and they no longer had the yellow fur and they also no longer had type two, were predisposed to type 2 diabetes and cancer and obesity. So that really highlights the importance of having good micronutrients in your diet because good micronutrients are uh, important for regulating gene expression. And actually, um, folic acid is, is a prime example. So folate actually um, is important for making DNA. It, it, it's important for making something called thiamine, which is one of the nucleotides in your DNA. But it's also an important methyl donor. So it's, folate's an important uh, micronutrient to have in your body because it's a very important to provide these methyl groups that, are, like I mentioned, sit on top of your DNA and will turn genes on or off. Mostly they turn genes off, but they also can turn them on. 